Taxes, you may love them, you may hate them, you may fall somewhere in the middle. But when it comes to your own money, there are lots of opportunities within our tax code to lessen the pain of taxes a bit. And one of those is a 1031 exchange. If you're selling an investment property to buy another, it's a great way to shelter yourself from having to pay those capital gain taxes. However, 1031 exchanges are not for the faint of heart or the unorganized. As I jump into the basics today of 1031 exchanges, I wanna come right out and say that I found a phenomenal article from CWS Capital Partners, LLC. They put together some really great information on the basics of a 1031 exchange, but I'm not an intermediary, I'm not an attorney, and I would highly suggest that you maybe start here, but then seek a professional in your area because you do not wanna mess around with a 1031 exchange. So while there's gonna be some great stuff here, this in no way qualifies me or CWS as the end all be all of 1031 exchanges. So let's start by defining what is a 1031 exchange? A 1031 exchange gets its name from section 1031 of the US Internal Revenue Code, which allows you to avoid paying capital gains tax when you sell an investment property and reinvest the proceeds from the sale within a certain time limit in a property or properties of like kind and equal or greater value. So to break that down, you have an investment property, not your personal property, an investment property, and when you sell it, the proceeds go to buy the next one. However, from point A to point B, there's a whole lot more we need to discuss. If you're considering a 1031 exchange, the first thing you need to do is find a qualified intermediary. And this is because when you sell property A, you cannot touch the proceeds because if you do, guess what? They're taxable. The qualified intermediary is a person or company who holds on to those proceeds and then puts them towards the next property. You wanna make sure that the intermediary is extremely trustworthy, but it cannot be someone that you have a formal relationship with because that also breaks the rule. And depending upon what area you're in, I would start with a real estate attorney and ask if they do 1031s, and if they don't, who do they recommend in your area? When selling an investment property to buy another investment or several, you may ask yourself, why go through all this? The main benefit of a 1031 is tax deferral. And the CWS article that I found defines it as this. A 1031 exchange allows you to defer capital gains tax thus freeing more capital for investment in the replacement property. Simply put, if you don't have to pay capital gains tax on the sale of this property, you have more cash to put towards the next. But as I said, it's not that simple. There's a lot of rules and specific timelines that must be followed for this to work. And that first rule is purchasing what is called a like-kind property which means you have to trade A for something similar in category B, like a condo for a single family house, or perhaps vacant land for a commercial property. You cannot, for example, sell an investment property and then use those funds to purchase a franchise or put the money into artwork. That's not a like-kind property. The second rule is that the property you're purchasing must be of equal or greater value than the first property that you're selling. And the third rule is that the property for purchase must be identified within 45 days of the closing of the first property. And that transaction has to be completed within 180 days. The timelines here are super specific, so you've gotta make sure you're dealing with a professional who knows what they're doing and that you're ready to make things happen. In identifying which property or properties you're going to buy, there's three ways that you can meet this requirement. The three property rule, the 200% rule, and the 95% rule. And here's what each of them mean. The three property rule means you identify three properties as potential purchases. The 200% rule is when you identify unlimited properties as long as the cumulative value does not exceed 200% of the value of the property you are selling. The 95% rule allows you to identify as many properties as you like as long as you acquire properties valued at 95% of their total or more. And as you're working with your attorney and your qualified intermediary, 
you wanna make sure that you don't get the boot. And what's the boot, you may ask? The boot is the difference in value of the property sold versus the property being purchased or exchanged. It's called the boot, and that money is taxable. So for example, if you exchange a property for lesser value than you sold, the difference is taxable. If I sell a condo for 200,000 and I buy a townhome for 190, guess what? There's a $10,000 boot and I'm gonna pay taxes on it. If you exchange your investment property for a personal property, one that you're gonna live in or homestead, that does not qualify as a 1031 exchange and that is taxable. A mortgage on either side of the exchange is fine, but if the mortgage on the replacement property is less than the mortgage on the property being sold, then the difference is considered a boot. As with any real estate transaction, there's always going to be some fees associated with that. There are some fees that are permissible to be used with the exchange money and some that aren't. And here's what those are. Fees that are permissible to be paid by exchange funds include broker's commission, qualified intermediary fees, filing fees, related attorney's fees, title insurance premiums, related tax advisor fees, finder fees, and escrow fees. Fees that are not allowed to be paid by exchange funds include financing fees, property taxes, repair or maintenance costs, and insurance premiums. And this is where your qualified professionals come in. They're there to guide you and help you to make sure that the funds are going where they need to be, how they need to go there, and when they need to go there. There's an additional section of 1031 exchanges that has to do with if you're a business partner with other investors and you want to sell your share to use a 1031 exchange, there's a lot of specific ways you can do that. But since this is a top level basics video, I'm not going to dive into that and I'm going to suggest you talk to your professionals. Bottom line, there are some real benefits to a 1031 tax exchange, but the rules are very specific and need to be handled by a professional. And while I am a professional realtor, I am not a qualified intermediary, I am not an attorney, and I would highly suggest you seek those people out if this is something you're considering doing. If you're an investor or a potential one looking to get some more information and you live in the Gainesville area, don't miss my video on the top investor mistakes here in Gainesville. I'm Lindsay Johnson, your resource for all things real estate. See you next time.